So how do you confront gently? That's this week's topic, and it's a big one. But first, my name is Michelle Ferris. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist, and I love helping people create mutually satisfying relationships without sacrificing their big heart. I hear this a lot. I'm afraid to confront my partner. I'm afraid to confront an issue. Uh, that's because it is scary, and there's a reason for that. Part of what I'm gonna give you in this video is two specific things you can do to make it go better and to not be so afraid. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to confront your fear, okay? We all have fear when it comes to these kind of conversations because we don't know. And when we don't know, we tend to make up stuff. It's called false evidence appearing real, okay? We think the other person's gonna be mad at us. We think we're gonna lose the relationship if we say anything. But the problem is, is that if we let that fear get the better of us, then we never do it. And then we stuff it. And that doesn't work either because then you start to feel invisible. So the first step in gently confronting someone is face the fear. I want you to write down what is it that you're specifically afraid of with this person? Are you afraid they're gonna be mad at you? Are you afraid they're gonna potentially leave the relationship? And then ask yourself, how realistic is that fear? Has that person ever gone off on you in anger? Have they ever threatened to leave? Because most of the time, it's gonna be false evidence appearing real. We're just scaring ourselves by assuming the worst. Now, if there is a grain of truth in your fear because yes, they have blown up at you or yes, they have threatened to leave, then I want you to work on number two, which is how you deliver your message. Because how we deliver it is key. But first, you gotta be clear on what your fears are and then I want you to write down what are some positive statements you can tell yourself that negate the fear. Like that person loves me. They, there's no evidence they're gonna leave the relationship. Yes, this is gonna be uncomfortable, but I can do it. And I want you to also hold it as confronting an issue, not the person. Because when we confront a person, we get more scared. But if we're confronting an issue, then it's something we're kind of mutually doing together and it can feel less scary. Now for number two, we gotta work on how we deliver the message because that is key in all of our communication. I talk about that a lot in my Calming Your Anger home study version of my course because how you deliver the message is key. So what I want you to do is I want you to consider telling and sharing your subjective point of view about the issue because this is where most people get lost in confronting. They either make the other person wrong or we try to be right, okay? I'm right, which means you're wrong. And both of those are gonna blow up a conversation really fast. And that's why when most people confront an issue, it doesn't go very well and they don't get heard. So instead, I want you to think about how are you gonna express yourself and your subjective opinion? And what I mean by that is your point of view, how you see the situation. So for instance, this might look like, I did this recently about Christmas. I had to talk with a family member how we're gonna do Christmas, and they were already making plans with their family. So I had to say, you know what? I feel left out when you make plans with the other members of the family without me. Now, I didn't make them wrong, but I shared how I felt and what it felt like to me. Now, another way to do this is, I might be assuming that you're leaving me out. Is that right? and you check out your assumption. But me sharing how I feel is a lot more inviting than me telling that person that they're wrong for leaving me out. See the difference? So what I want you to do is just practice, hey, this is my concern. This is how I took what happened. And then when you're talking about the issue, what is it that you're actually wanting? Because if you can't identify that, you're not gonna know where you wanna land. So go into the conversation knowing, hey, I would like to talk about Christmas or I would like to have more of a say there, okay? I had to be very clear on what I wanted and that helped a lot. Making the other person wrong wouldn't have helped. So this is how you confront the issue. You are subjective. You use words like in my point of view or how I see it or this is how it felt to me because that is gonna be much more inviting. And people honestly can't get mad when you share your own experience. What people get mad at is being made wrong, okay? Or make you made me feel this way. 
No, that's not really true. We make ourselves feel that way because everybody interprets what's being said to them in a different way based on our history, okay? So again, the two things I want you to do is I want you to confront the fear because a lot of that is false evidence appearing real. And then the second is I want you to really practice subjectively sharing your point of view of the issue and ask for what you need. That's what's gonna help you confront an issue gently and directly. For more tips, I would love it if you join my email list. I actually just recently created a 30 minutes to better boundary solutions free training video with my friend Sharon Martin, who's also a therapist. So I'm going to leave the link in the description of this post and I hope to see you there. Okay, bye.